Okay, and then lastly, fiber channel also supports port channels. Okay, so a storage port channel is gonna aggregate the bandwidth of multiple physical links just like an ethernet port channel. Okay, we'll see that the one minor caveat with this is that there is a negotiation protocol called the port channel protocol, PCP. PCP is very, very finicky with its order of operations. And the reason that we even care about this to begin with is that the, U the UCS fabric interconnects only support channeling with port channel protocol running in active mode. Okay, it's the logical equivalent of LACP. So just like with Ethernet port channels, you would say channel group one mode active. For uh, SAN port channel, you say interface SAN port channel one, uh, channel mode active. But we'll, t we'll see this from an implementation point of view. There's a very, very specific order you need to go through where basically the final step, well actually no, the first step is you shut the ports down. Okay, make sure that they're admin disabled before you make any config changes from a, a port channeling point of view. Then the very last step is no shot. Okay, but if the interface is up while it's trying to do the negotiation on one side and not the other side, the interface can go into error disabled state and sometimes it will never come back unless you reboot the box. Okay, so long story short, make sure that you shut the port down before you do the port channel configuration. Okay, we'll talk about that from an order of operations point of view in later sections, but from just a theory point of view, the channeling is supported. Uh, and if you were not to channel, then you would do routing equal cost. Okay, so it's like in the case of the IP world, if I have two routers, let's say I have two ASR 1Ks, and I have two physical links between them, I want to route on both links, I have two options. I could create two separate subnets and run two separate routing adjacencies. So OSPF process one is enabled on interface one, OSPF process one is enabled on, process, uh, on interface two. So it's the same database, it's the same information that I'm learning on both of the links, but I would have equal cost routes and then I would be able to load balance between the two of them. Okay, do ECMP. Same is true with FSPF, fabric shortest path first. If you have two links between your 5K to your MDS or your 5K to your 7K, you're running multi-op FCOE or you're running an expansion port with a native fiber channel, the default behavior is that if the, if the member interfaces are the, or the, the, the expansion ports are the same speed, it means that they're the same routing metric. Okay, because in FSPF, the metric is coming from the bandwidth of the link, just like OSPF does. So if I have two 16 gig fiber channel links, then I'm gonna load balance on them you know, on a per flow basis. Okay, the flow is defined by what we call, what we call the exchange ID, the XID. And the exchange, you could think of this like the TCP session information, it's the flow data. Every time I send a new read request or I send a new write request, it's gonna be a new flow. Okay, it's gonna be a new exchange. Okay, so the point of this is that from a load balancing point of view, if you're going switch to switch, you don't necessarily have to channel the interfaces together because routing will load balance between the two. But we'll see from the end host's point of view, the end host is not routing. And the end host can only do a default route one way. Okay, specifically where this is gonna come in is when we're going down to the UCS. So from the northbound switch connected to the UCS Fabric Interconnect, we can do SAN port channels. And we would typically want to do that because otherwise the multiple physical fiber channel links cannot be load balanced between when we're uh, booting a single server off of it or, or just sending uh, read and write requests off of it. As opposed to like iSCSI, you would be able to do you know, normal ECMP routing uh, from an IP uh, routing uh, point of view. Okay, so we'll, the details, we'll come back to this in, 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 in more detail later, but just be aware of that this is a function that you can port channel at the access layer, you can port channel between the switches, but if you don't port channel between the switches, the default behavior should be equal cost routing based on fabric shortest path first automatically running. 